everybody. <clears throat> Sorry. Stephanie here. All right. Uh, this is part two of the cartridge writer for the F-256K and F-256 Junior. Today, we're, we're going to go a little bit back to school. Um, it's going to be a, a, a little bit more tedious, although I'll try to make it a bit quicker. Um, this is going to be the video today. The next time we're going to go deep into code and I did a little bit of work in the code, but before I wanted to go any further, I wanted to explain how the MMU work on the C256 Junior and the K. They're basically the same thing. Um, <clears throat> of course, as you all know, um, the 6502 or even the 816 in a emulation mode uh, or at least within working off a single page of 64K, um, working in a system that has way more than 64K is a problem. Um, so in the past, the only way to really um, do something about it was to reserve a page um, within the 64K of the addressing uh, range of the CPU, which is for the 6502 at least, or the Z80, or the, 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 well, the Z80 is a bit different, but the 1609, etc., etc., the, they usually work within 64K. So most of the time, what they did was to take one block and to assign that block and say, hey, we're going to create pages out of the bigger size memory, and we're going to fit those pages into that block so the CPU can address it. Um, so in our case, it's, it's almost like this. Um, like, for example, like in the X16, I believe that there's one single block within the CPU range, the 64K, that is reserved for the paging. That that block never moves. It's always at the same place. So you basically have the <clears throat> 56K, that is RAM. I believe I'm, I'm going on a limb. I didn't read the, the whole memory map, but I believe that their, their memory management is um, basically a 56k of RAM that is accessible by the <clears throat> CPU and you probably have some IOs in there but you have one page of 8k that you get to select uh, the rest of the memory to fit into that 8k and then the CPU can access it either it's flash or it's ROM uh, it's flash or it's RAM and then you get your data you run in it you, you do your swap and so on and so forth um, in our case it's a bit different because <clears throat> in our case uh, you can assign every, because our pages size is 8K, so we have 8 pages in the system, um, and those 8K pages can be mapped within the 8 pages in the CPU memory map. And in the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll show what I mean. But essentially, since the, CCT, the C256 Phoenix, or the F256 Phoenix, sorry, I said C256 Phoenix before, never mind that, it's the F256 Phoenix, the junior or the K, we have 512K of memory RAM that is uh, mappable and it's in blocks. So if you look at the, uh, the first slide, at the bottom of the memory, you have the MMU block 0, 0 to 3F. So this is, um, 3F, is 3F is 63, so it's 64 blocks of 8K. And those blocks which are number from 0 to 63, can be assigned in any slot, and I'll show you the slot, the slot after. Then we have 512K, uh, 512K of flash, same thing. Their number is 40 to set 7F. Then we have the cartridge that is 256K region reserved for this. It's from 80 to 90F. And then there's a nothingness, there's a big nothing burger uh, above, and it's really nothing after that. In the 6502 um, version of this. The 1609 is a bit different. But essentially, this is what it is. However, in the first block, so within the first eight, the 64K, there's two fix region for us. We have an 8K that is actually reserved for the IOs. And within that 8K that you can see on the right side, where's my moose? Okay, on the right side, you have four blocks that you can uh, uh, switch with the register 0, 1. And because 0, 0, the register at the bottom of the memory, like the C64, if you will, is to control the MMU, and the register 1 control the IOs. And essentially, you can 
choose the block of IOs and those uh, the two last blocks is basically the text region and the color region the other one the first one is usually all the different IOs in the system the SD card the interrupts and the timers and all these things the block one is mostly the font memory the um, the um, <clears throat> lookup tables stuff like this um, you, you can find all the details in the manual ba basically I, I mean, it's, it's basically just a revision um, going over things to so we know where we're going with this um, <clears throat> so essentially to construct the whole uh, the whole um, memory address you have to specify what which block you want 8k block and then the CPU fills the rest and that's what we see in this uh, um, MMU address translation here um, so like I said uh, I was so sad I was saying so it, at the block C00 to DFFF this is the location where the IO is it's very reminiscing of the C64 that's why it's there but it can be disabled so if one doesn't want to doesn't need to address anything um, somebody can um, disable it and have full RAM or full flash whatever you want so at this six, this block specifically you can have IOs you can have RAM ROM well when I say ROM I mean flash um, even cartridge um, so this is really what it is the only one that really don't go away is 00 and 001 and like I said if we look at the whoops ah I let's let's do that again okay so if I look at the MMU top here um, 00, zero the two first two bit uh, will decide because we have four lookup tables that's we that's how we call it there's four of them which means that you can go from one environment to another and to another and to another like fundamentally right now there's like there's two there's two regions that are used by the kernel zero and one the two lookup tables so different configuration where things are the the lookup table three is the user one so if we stay within the microkernel environment usually when you start a software so when we're going to start the cartridge writer then we're going to be in lookup table three and so that's where we make the changes um so in uh so there's two things we need to know about the memory uh, memory gen unit which is that the first two bit of zero zero decide which one is active which lookup table is active right and by the way it, it's it, it's exactly the same model as anybody who's know who knows coco and the trsad memory management that's the same thing that's exactly how we go about it but there's just more lookup tables instead of having two i don't even know if they had two but we have four so the two first bit of the zero zero control which one is active right so which one is actually live and being worked on and that's what the CPU sees then bit 4 and bit 5 is the one that you tell the CPU or you you want to edit so you can have one being executed or being used and you can edit the three others or you can edit live all of them but especially you could what you would want to edit uh, the other pages outside of being affected by the process in place so the two bit four and five decide which one has been edited and those eight location where you put those bytes that decide which which MMU block is within the slot the CPU slot um, are between address eight and address F so those so between zero zero and zero F is kind of reserve ish in the case of the C256 no the F256K and junior you can enable or disable the edit portion so in reality you could say I don't need to edit my MMU tables lookup tables so I'll you know disable the edit so you turn bit 7 to 0 and then that section between 8 and F is RAM you don't have to worry about it um, so once in a while if you have to re-edit those locations because you want to access um, the memory the the RAM memory for example the video memory then you have to go and edit and or you can live edit if you want to um, also something I wanted to say before is that this first 512k of memory that is bankable if you wish for the CPU for the Viki engine the graphicals engine it's uh, systematically a linear space so whenever you are accessing for sprites and bitmaps and everything it's always an absolute address the graphical engine works off the whole memory as opposed to the CPU works in, in little bit blocks of 8k it's important to know um, as for the MMU IO control 
you uh, tell it what page you want to access and you can disable it simply that's it otherwise there's nothing else to so this is really the overall memory structure so if we go on the second page um, let's uh, uh, fade so let's see if I'm going to get my second page here why am I not getting my second page what's going on hmm let's see if uh, no whoops oops whoops oops 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 uh, okay hold on a minute I'm gonna say from current slide there you go sorry about that okay so to resume um, essentially the CPU these are the eight slots okay and here are the different locations so I'm 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 going to talk about the assignment and every, every slots for the um, C the cartridge writer okay so next time I make a video I'm gonna start getting in the code I'm gonna say oh I'm in slot one slot two da, 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 da. that's what I'm talking about today um, I'm already 11 minutes in okay so let's make it quick so in the F256 junior and K you can either boot in flash mode which means that there is a kernel flash in the uh, last section of the flash which is block 7f and automatically when you're in, in flash booting mode this is essentially what the the CPU will be seeing when it's booting right so you reset it's gonna seize the flash it's been programmed there's a vectors are <clears throat> been assigned you jump into the, the the reset vector you jump in your code Bob's your uncle right now sometimes you want to develop things you don't want to necessarily boot into the the, the flash all the time so you can on the F256 junior there's a jumper you can switch and say hey I'm in RAM mode I'm going to download through the USB the USB connectivity we have and the downloader and scripts we have we can download codes wherever you want we want so um, for development purpose there's an option where you can actually download your code into the RAM and then you reset and it's going to reset from RAM so you obviously put vector resets there and it's going to run your code Ta -da -da. so these are in the K it's by software in the junior it's through a hardware jumper although there will probably be a, rev a version where it's going to be by software some people are complaining about this <laughs> so then so this always take precedence in the block e, this the slot 7 so slot 7 it's either RAM or flash when you reset of course later you can resign it to anything you want doesn't matter the, the slot 6 is always for IOs always boot where the IOs is there like I said these four blocks of IOs are being um, chosen you can have RAM underneath it if you want to turn it off you can put flash whatever you want but fundamentally within the the normal working inner workings of the kernel um, and you'll be using these anyway for the um, um, text mode if you will um, uh, whatever you use text on your own for your own software you you will use these IO systems anyway now um, that being said um, in the context of what I want to do which is the flash writer um, what I will do is I will assign two slots slot one and slot two because fundamentally slot zero and slot one there's location zero and one that are permanent and for reprogramming flash it's not a good idea to be there so when you program a, a NOR flash and I'll talk more about it next time is to have to, you have to send a series of command which is basically to write certain byte to certain location in a certain orders to tell the flash a hey, I want to do something and those combinations are so random while well, they're not random they're pretty precise but the, the 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 odds of somebody doing exactly that is so remote that it doesn't doesn't make any it, it's working that way so there's like sometimes three or four bytes to send and then a command byte and uh, to get out of a mode or something like that so I'll talk about it next time so essentially I in order to program these combination I need two sectors the sector zero sector one because I need to send out the address to AAA and 55555 and in order to do this I need to have those two sectors then I put next to it 
another sector that I will be switching depending where I want to go ride the bite in the flash. Again, I'll talk about this next time. Then I need to have an assigned block. I'm assigning um, a block, which is not really, um, it's just gonna be RAM, but I'm just going to load the data from the media. So if it's there's the card, like the binary, I wanna go flash. I'm going to load by 8K increment this in that slot specifically, and then go write every byte in the sector zero, slot one, and then switch back the sectors, uh, MMU sector 40 and 41 to do the commands and then program the byte and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's kind of a trade off, but since there's waiting time for the flash for things to program, it should be perfectly fine. Now, the, the code itself, the C write, will be located in flash, will probably be ran from the sector. Uh, I, I wrote A0 to F0, but I think it's A0 to BFFF. So my bad, forgot to change it. So essentially this is how the whole the application will be structured inside the memory of the CPU. Um, and um, like I said, the only thing that will really change is the in slot one to swap between the block I need to do my my programming sequence of the address and data to, to be able to send a command and the actual block that needs to be written to, right? So in that case, um, in our case, uh, C0 will be kept as Ohio. Uh, normally the flash will be in slot seven and then the kernel will find my sector. I'll talk about it later, but essentially C right is in one location in the external flash. Um, which will be, the kernel will put it wherever it needs to be and be executed. So I don't have to worry about this. So as, as far as the rest is concerned, when I start calling the routine to go read the media, I'm gonna put my data in the 6000 uh, slot three, and then I'm going to start making the, the writing and so on and so forth. All right, so this is for today. I'm sorry, it's a bit boring, but I think people will really enjoy to knowing how the MMU works. So as you can see, you can essentially program any slot in any type of memory, like I said, RAM, ROM, and it's really about those values between eight and, uh, and zero F, where you put the byte that says, okay, like for example, uh, sector 40, you would put the value of sector zero, which is the uh, menu sector 40, in the section, in the memory location zero nine, which represents slot one, um, and depending on the MMU lookup table you chose, because there's four of them. Um, but again, you can read that in the manual as well. I'm just kind of giving you the overall information. So if you put 40, if you put the, the byte 40 in the location 09 when the edit is on, in the good lookup table that is the actual one, for example, then you would, um, the CPU would have access to the flash sector zero. It's sector zero because there's 63 64 sector and you would have access to it within the cpu address ring range all right i hope it's not too complicated if you have questions post them in the comment uh you know people always say uh, subscribe and everything if you find those things interesting i'm trying to do one possibly two every week because they're pretty small now they're getting longer but hey <laughs> please subscribe and you know click the bell and yeah, that's it. That shenanigans, whatever. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll see you um, real soon. Thanks.